Um, so one of the reasons that we genetically modify our food is to make our crops uh, insect resistant. If you think about um, 30 years ago, they used to have crop dusters where the planes would fly over the crops and they would spray out this uh, big spray of pesticides in order to keep the crops from being eaten by these pests. Um, here you see a tomato worm. Um, it used to be that grasshoppers would eat up our corn. We uh, have all kinds of insect problems. So what if instead of spraying our uh, crops with pesticides or insecticides, we could just weave that right into the genetic material of the plants and then the insects wouldn't, uh, wouldn't eat them in the first place. So it seems like a good idea if we weave it into the, uh, genetic, the genetics of the plant, then we don't have to spray so many chemicals on our crops, but then you start thinking, well, if we're not spraying it on our crops, but our crops are genetically engineered to kill off things that eat it, and then we eat it, you tend to think, well, that's, uh, that's probably not very good for us. So um, we might be able to reduce the amount of pesticides that we're spraying on our plants, but creating this internal genetically uh, created pesticide may be creating new problems that we don't even know about. Now, of course, uh, it's not that we are um, putting this into our bloodstream, or if you think about DDT, which is something that we're going to talk about in lab, um, DDT is a chemical that hurts our wildlife and gets into our drinking water. Um, there's lots of different pesticides, lots of different insecticides. Um, Spraying them in chemical form is one problem, but actually weaving them into ge the genetics of our plants, um, once it goes through our, our gut and gets broken apart by the acids in our stomach, um, are they still the same problems uh, that, that we would have just by spraying them? So uh, here's one great example of, um, of an uh, insecticide that is genetically woven into, uh, into a plant. So here we've got a corn plant that was being destroyed by insects. So as you can imagine, these tasty, tasty corn plants, uh, the grasshoppers come along and they want to eat them up. And so what scientists have done is they've taken a bacterium and they've woven a Bt crystal gene into the bacterial DNA, that circular DNA that's inside of the bacteria. So they then take this plant cell right here and put the, uh, the gene of interest from the bacteria into the corn genome. So this bacterial gene that corn uh, codes, now I'm going to get code and corn mixed up, the bacterial gene that codes for Bt crystals, which are poisonous to insect pests, is then inserted into the plant's DNA. So here's where people start to get kind of, uh, kind of worried about genetic modifications. And you can understand why they are uh, uh, worried about this. If you're growing a poison inside of a bacteria and then putting it in our food, is that healthy for us? And just because we found that uh, in the short term that it's okay, no long-term studies have been done on this because we've only been doing this for probably the last 10 to 15 years. So what if we end up finding out that 30 years later this causes cancer or it causes mutations in our cells? That's kind of the, the issue with genetic modification is that we can tell in the short term that it's not doing anything to humans, but it's killing these insects and is that really good for us in the long term? So we've, uh, we've got the bacterium, it's got the Bt crystals in it, we put it in these plant cells, then we grow the plant cells and it is toxic to these insect pests. Uh, the corn is producing a toxic chemical that kills off the pests. So therefore we don't have to spray it with pesticides, but it's making pesticides internally. So you can kind of see where the, the controversy might be. So uh, another thing that we have is uh, herbicide resistance. If you've ever read about Monsanto or any of those, uh, of those big companies that are uh, producing these 
seeds, and then the Roundup, which is the uh, pesticide that's being uh, sprayed on top of the crops. The herbicide is uh, killing off weeds so that we're only putting our water and our, uh, and our, uh, our work into getting the crops that we want and not the weeds. And so if we kill off weeds, if we kill them off with uh, herbicide, then, uh, then we then eat the herbicide. Uh, if we produce the herbicide inside of them, then we're eating the plant that has the herbicide in it. So it's really kind of um, some place we think is safe, but you can never really be sure in the long, in the long run. Um, here is something that's also uh, interesting as far as genetic modification goes. We've been able to uh, modify the genes of salmon so that if you look at the wild-caught salmon, which is the one that's there on the bottom, uh, that is what a salmon, we could say, should look like. Uh, and the one on top has uh, different genes that have been uh, engineered into the salmon cells so that it grows faster, so that it's got more meat on it. Um, and you can see why that's a commercially uh, a good thing because the bigger your salmon, the faster they grow, uh, the more money you can get from the salmon meat. So sounds good to the people that are producing the salmon, uh, but is it good for humans in the long term? It's kind of a, a question that you can definitely delve deeper into.